Okay. All right. Is uh, the blue light on? All right. Awesome. Okay. This is lesson 6.3. All right. So we've added fractions, right? Get a common denominator, add the numerators, and put them over the common denominator. We multiplied fractions. Top times top, bottom times bottom, R bum, reduce before you multiply. Okay, was that a lot of things to learn? No. All right, so watch. What did I say? Add fractions, add the numerators, put them over a common denominator. That's all you had to do. Multiply fractions, top times top, bottom times bottom, reduce before you multiply. Okay, that's been three things. That's it. Number four, division. All right, so look at the rule here on division. Let's see if we can get all this stuff off my screen. All right, does anybody know, you should have learned this in sixth grade, how you divide fractions. So if you look in the box, we have an A over B. You don't need to do that. So I'm just trying to focus what I'm talking about. We have A over B divided by C over D. Does anybody know the division rule? Wyatt. You flip C and D. Do I do anything else? Not only do I flip, I change the fraction, I change the division sign to a multiplication symbol, right? So you change the division. So go ahead and write that in. You change the division symbol to a raised dot, and you flip the divisor. And so really, flip it's invert. So in the blank there in green, I'm writing invert the divisor. Some of you wouldn't know what the divisor is. It's the second one. Second fraction gets flipped. Second fraction gets flipped. Now, I always love it when I come to this part in the course because I love to ask, how many know why you flip the second one? I mean, you know. You actually know why. John, can you close that door for us? Why do you flip the second fraction? Ileana? <laughs> okay, it's not a bad thought. It's not a bad thought. Uh, multiplication and division are inverses of each other. So if that's the thought along that line, if you'll do the inverse of division, you should then solve it. Not a bad thought. Let me show you exactly why this rule works. All right, so on your notes there, you've got this situation, right? Okay, so here's the thought. If you look right here, this is really what we have. Don't You don't need to box that in. I'm just trying to focus you on where I'm looking and what I'm talking about. Don't we have an A divided by B that is then divided by a C over D? That is exactly what this is. They're exactly the same. It's an A divided by B fraction, and that whole fraction divided by a C over D. It's exactly what we have. Now here's the problem. For our fraction, the top, the numerator, is a fraction. That's no good. Not only that, the bottom of our fraction right here is also a fraction. That's no good. And you never want a fraction for a numerator or a fraction for a denominator. It's no good. And we need to get rid of that. Well, it's easy to get rid of it. And it's the question, how do we get the denominator to be 1? I need to get this bottom part right here to be 1. So I want to do it on this one right here. So we'll do the work right here to figure it out. Anybody have any idea how to get a C over D on the bottom to end up being a 1? That's the thought. Nick? Nick? Exactly right. Multiply it by the reciprocal. So you guys can do this in your notes. Let's multiply it by a D over a C.
Is what we just did acceptable? Or did we change the value of the whole thing? Because I, I seem to remember telling you something like this. Whatever you do to the bottom, finish it. Do the same thing to the top. Because then you're multiplying by one. If you multiply anything by one, you don't change its value. So here's what we need to do. We need to do the same thing to the top. So I'm going to multiply the top by a D over a C. So I multiplied the bottom by D over C, but I also multiplied the top by D over C. Isn't that one? You should think so. If you don't, you're not quite understanding, but it is. What's 5 divided by 5? 1. What's 8 divided by 8? 1. What's x divided by x? 1. What's d divided by c divided by d divided by c? 1. So I'm not changing the value. I'm changing the form, but I'm not changing the value. So look what happens on the bottom. c divided by c is 1. Right? And d divided by d is 1. And in fact, we got 1 on the bottom, didn't we? All right. So I'll use my red here, being you guys don't have purple. So tell me what this looks like. Isn't what's left exactly what the rule has you end up at? I mean, that's all the rule is doing is a shortcut to really what takes place in dividing two fractions. So the shortcut of it is flip or invert the second fraction and multiply. But that's all you have to do to remember to divide fractions. Invert the second and multiply. Oh, and by the way, it's wise when you get to the multiplication step to R bum, right? Otherwise, you will be one. Anybody have uh, R bum written on their quiz paper from yesterday and willing to admit it? Yes, you bums. All right, some bums out there. Uh, you're just making life harder on yourself if you don't remember that step. It's not a hard thing to remember. But because right there we're going to multiply, we should look to reduce right there. Will you always reduce on that step? And the answer is no, and that's why some of you forget. Every time you multiply two fractions, do they always reduce? No. And because they don't always reduce, you forget at times when they do. But you always have to look. You always look to see if they reduce. Okay, so that's the idea. That's what it's all about. That's how you divide fractions. Okay, so let's go through and do some here. You get a little higher. All right, so the first one. Do you do anything to the first fraction, yes or no? No, it just stays three-fifths. Don't be flipping the first one. All right, don't be flipping out. Can't be flipping all over the place. That's no good. All right, remember... The division sign gets changed to a raised dot. I've already done that for us, right? And then the second one gets flipped. So the 7 on the bottom becomes the top, and the 4 on the top becomes the bottom. It's more handy to do these to the right. So again, why do I always want you to show the rule step? Because I want you to remember how to divide fractions. You invert the second and you multiply. And every time you write it, besides think it, it helps you to remember it longer. So just write it. It takes a couple seconds. Uh, by the way, it's the step we're also going to look to reduce on. Now I look, is there any reducing? And there is none, but I'm looking. So then top times top, we all know that's a 21. And bottom times the bottom, we all know that's a 20. And that's it. 21 over 20, and on we go. And division is not hard. Okay, so the second one. Number three there. 
All right, not a problem. Do we flip the first one, yes or no? No, just leave it. Negative 26 over 25. Change the division to a multiplication symbol. I've already done that for you. Don't forget when it's you doing it. The 5 goes from the bottom to the top. The 3 goes from the top to the bottom. By the way, let me pause. Will our answer be positive or negative? negative. Come on, folks. Think it through. When you're done with your quiz, instead of rushing to turn it in like some of you do, I keep trying to tell you, go back over your quiz. You should be checking every one for the sign because you know a negative times a positive is a negative. This thing better end up negative. Okay, our bum right here. Hey, a negative 6 is a negative 2 times a 3. And a 25 is a 5 times 5. Now, again, if you're a bum, you'll just multiply it all out, have a big mess, and then try to unmultiply it so you can reduce it. So let's go ahead and, come on, go away, thank you. So let's go ahead and reduce this thing out. Oh, enough. My daughter is working on some of this stuff right now. So again, we've got a 3 over 3, and that divides out. 3 on the top, 3 on the bottom. We've got a 5 on the top over here and a 5 on the bottom over there. And they divide out. And again, please be neat here so you don't lose anything. So what's left on the top, class? Negative 2. And what do we got left on the bottom? 5. That's it. Negative 2 fifths. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's all that one was, a negative 2 fifths. But you got to remember to invert and multiply. Let's do a few more and see if we can get things down. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I'm shaking in my boots. We got a whole number. All right. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I think I'll write the first one as negative 3 over 7. By the way, is our final answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. It is going to be negative. Good. Somebody, all right, I already changed the division symbol to a raised dot to multiplication. So what do I put in the second blank, Gabe? Okay, I, you want me to put a 1 there and a 5 there? How many agree with Gabe? And you would be all the correct ones because, you know, 5's no problem. It's a 5 over 1. 5's in the top, it goes in the bottom. 1's in the bottom, it goes in the top. What do you always remember to do on this step? Look to reduce, right? Reduce before you multiply. Can we reduce this? So it's an easy problem, right? Now, again, some of you, you're off on your times tables. I can't help you there. As I said, go back and practice your times tables. So we get negative 3 over 35. And that's it. Oh, no. The whole number's in the front. Oh. Of course, surely I know you have no idea how to do this. We haven't gone over it, so I know you can't get it right. But just try. Go ahead and try to solve that. See what you get. I know it's impossible, and you'll never be able to do it because we didn't do one just like it. And math's so hard. And on top of that, it's fractions. And so, of course, you can't do fractions. Nobody can. Let's see what you can do. Okay, so let's take a look and see what you did. Come on. Go away so I can get to my buttons. Okay, so hopefully you just said, hey, that's an 18 over 1. And hopefully you put the 5 on the top and the 8 on the bottom. And were you a bum? Any bums out there? <laughs> Our bum, we got a 2 and a 9, and we got a 2 and a 4, and the 2s are gone. All right, and that looks like it. Top, 9 times 5 is 45. On the bottom is a 4. How many got 45 fourths? Wait a minute, I thought fractions were hard. Look, the only time fractions are hard is if you don't remember really the four things. To add fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Add the numerators, put them over the common denominator. 
to multiply fractions, top times top, bottom times bottom, reduce before you multiply. Divide fractions. Invert the second one, change the division, do multiplication. And again, now you're back to multiplying, so we already know, reduce before you multiply. Four things. That's it. Four. Just four. So memorize that if you don't know that. It's simple. All right, let's do another one. Okay, oh no, the dreaded mixed number. Oh my, but look, we've been doing mixed numbers all along. Somebody tell me, what do you get when you change negative three and two-fifths into an improper fraction? Ashton? Awesome, negative 17 fifths. Hopefully you concur. And just to be clear, I'm going to show that step. Again, I, I wish I would have stopped putting the raised dot there so you'd remember to do it. So just be careful because I keep doing that. And when I revise this sheet, I'll leave that out so you remember to do it. So we got a negative 17 over 5. And we're going to flip, right? Invert 10 on the top, 3 on the bottom. Am I ready to roll? What do I want to do? Our bum. Or you are a bum. All right, that 10 is a 2 times 5, and our 5s are gone, right? Okay, that's more manageable. Hopefully, you can do a 2 times a negative 17. By the way, is our final answer going to be positive or negative? negative? Negative. So that's a negative 34 over 3. There was one mixed number and one fraction, so I'll just leave it as an improper fraction. It's a le one less step and one less chance of getting something wrong. If they're both mixed numbers, then we'll change it to a mixed number. Again, however the homework wants it to be, though, that's how you'll do it for the homework, right? However they want it. If you don't know, how can you figure out the way the book wants it if it doesn't say? Look at some of the odds on the answer sheet, right, and see how they're leaving their answer. Okay, let's do another one. So no problem. Oh, the mixed fraction is second this time, right? Not a big deal. Somebody tell me what we get for a 2 and 5, 6. Wyatt? 17 over 6. Great. So again, piece of cake. Leave the first one the way it is. Change the division to multiplication. Flip the second one. And always look to reduce before you multiply. Otherwise, you're wasting time and increasing your chance of getting it wrong. All right, in this one, the threes go away. I don't know why I'm stuck on 17s. All right, so the top is a negative 10. What do you get three times 17? Say it if you know it. 51. 51. Negative 10 over 51. Again, I'll leave it that way because 1 was a fraction. Oh, you couldn't anyhow. It's a proper fraction. Okay, let's look at the last example here. All right, why don't you guys try it? I'll give you a, just a couple minutes see what you can do. All right, so let's see. Where are we going with this thing? Negative 16 fifths. Divide it by negative 19 fourths. So negative 16 over 5 times a 4 over negative 19. Hey, is your answer positive or negative? I hope so. Oh, man, no R bumming. No R bumming on this one. All the 2s are on the top, and there's no 2s on the bottom. 4 times 16. Anybody got that? What do you got? Say it if you know it. 64. Come on. Okay, and on the bottom, 5 times 19 is? Because 5 times 20 is 100 minus 1, 5 is 95, right? How many got that right? It's amazing. What math whizzes. All right, last one, grand finale, the grand finale. Oh, no. Now I'm shaking in my boots. 
surely we would have no earthly idea how to do this problem. Go ahead and try it. See what you can do. See what you can do. Give it a shot. I know it's impossible. There's no way you can do it. But try. Is your answer positive or negative? <laughs> oh, I don't like that answer. Yes, I do like that answer. Ha <laughs> ha. I lost my negative. Right up there. Copy my original. That'd be bad. All right, so let's see. All right, do you have a proper fraction or an improper fraction? Improper? Proper? All right. Let's finish off here. Okay, so you guys are frozen, right? So you can't see anything. All of that equals that? What do you mean proper? What do you mean improper? Say on three your answer. Here we go. One, two, three. But I thought... Fractions are impossible. All right, so just five, right? How many got that right? I heard a lot of fives out there. All right, good. Hey, just one step at a time, right? One step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. All right, your homework tonight. Keep working hard. Go back and review some of the areas that are giving you trouble if they are. All right, class, this is page 235. Quiet, please. 235, do 1 and 2. 5 through 12. You can see some of these can go very quickly. Oh, by the way, what step do you think I want you to show? The rule step. 1, 2, 5 through 12, 25, 26. Your homework should look just like the problems we did in the notes. 28, 30. And I need to put my glasses on to see the last one there. 45 and 46. Okay. And that's it with fractions, folks.